All right. So another thing that we can do with XPS and AES is compositional imaging. So this is very similar to what we talked about with SEM EDS, where we map out the struct, the composition, excuse me, uh, of the surface and are able to uh, determine if there's, you know, different phase regions or if there's um, a certain element that's on the surface, on the edge, you know, wherever it is. And it's able to give us a, a, a kind of a map of where the composition is. We can do similar things with XPS and AES. So this is compositional imaging or, or mapping is the term we use with XPS. However, it is a lot more difficult with XPS. Uh, so that's one thing to keep in mind. Um, so this is actually uh, an example of an SEM image, but then they have uh, basically an OJ electron uh, elemental map. And so you kind of see here, this is the SEM image and then all the different elements that we're looking at. So you see that kind of uh, car uh, copper is everywhere, zinc, and then um, tin seems to be kind of at the, um, the boundaries here. Same thing with oxygen. And you can see different uh, issues with the uh, a similar material over here. So we can get where the elements are actually appearing on the sample, not just bulk information about the entire image. So uh, again, we can use this to determine things like diffusion of elements at grain boundaries, um, you know, different phased regions. And again, because it's OJ or XPS, this is more surface sensitive as well. So with EDS, it does give us information about more volume of the material. And so this, is, uh, this can be particularly helpful if we wanna get a more surface sensitive approach as well. So this is a, a gold-coated stainless steel, and we see that nickel and oxygen and iron, you know, and gold all tend to go to different positions, and that can be useful. And you can kind of see the grain boundaries here. So the iron and oxygen tend to go to those grain boundaries, uh, and then nickel's right around it, and then we see gold in the in the middle. So uh, there's differences uh, with position, the spatial distribution of the elements. All right, so I mentioned that compositional imaging is, or mapping is more challenging for XPS. So I want you to think about the differences between XPS and AES and see if you can come up with why you think XPS would be more challenging than AES. So pause the video, brainstorm that a little bit, write that in the quiz and then come back and we will discuss. All right, so let's take a look. So the reason it is, uh, why it's more challenging with XPS, is the fundamental difference in the incident photon source or the uh, electron source. With XPS, we have an X-ray beam. We talked about the different uh, X-rays that we use. Uh, and then AES, it uses that electron beam. That's why we saw that it, it's, uh, you know, in here in the SEM image, uh, it's part of the SEM. So it uses an electron beam. And so we know using an electron beam, we're able to focus in a similar man manner to uh, electron microscopy. And so we can, with a field emission gun, we can get really low spatial resolution, 10 nanometers, right? We know how to uh, manipulate an electron beam with those lenses and so forth, right? And so we can um, really control an electron beam. However, X-rays that are used in XPS are electronically neutral. And so those same electromagnetic, electromagnetic lenses cannot be focused or cannot focus X-rays like they can with um, AES. And so the spatial resolution, because we can't control X-rays as well and produce this very small beam, means that our spatial resolution is three, micro, uh, three microns. So 10 nanometers, three microns. So I've honestly only seen um, compositional mapping on XPS done once and it did not look great. <laughs> so it, this is just something that is typically not done uh, because you can do other things much easier like EDS. <laughs> uh, and so uh, it's obviously a, a very good option with AES, but not with XPS. And again, here's just kind of a, um, a way we can actually kind of focus the um, X-ray beam 
um, and it's basically using a, a curved crystal. So we kind of use uh, diffraction, uh, but we have a curved crystal which can kind of focus a convergent, a divergent beam onto the specimen. But again, there's limitations to how much we can do here. And so, but that's how it would be done for um, XPS compositional mapping. So here you can kind of see the um, the differences here. This is an XPS image, a compositional map, and you just see that you know we're looking at 100 microns here, and it's you know it doesn't look that great. <laughs> so again, this is something that's not typically done, but AES compositional mapping definitely because of the use of electrons. <clears throat>